Hello Retro Gamers and welcome back to my Retro Game Shelf. And this video is a thank you to all 400, over 400 of you who have subscribed to this channel in the past year since I've started making retro videos. Um, I love collecting retro games as you can see. There's more down there. It's a bit of a mess at the moment. And I just so happen to be wearing my Gunlord t-shirt right now. Which is all thumb. Full print on the back as well. And what I decided I was going to do, I did say in the previous video that I made for this channel that I was going to leave this until the end of April to record, but as a thank you to everyone, I thought I'd show off all of the pickups that I've grabbed in the past five months, or four months if you want to be exact. Um, so this will include consoles, modern games, retro games, uh, well, that's it really. So yeah, sit back, relax, grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, a cup of coke, whatever. And please, enjoy. And if you do enjoy, then comment. I mean, I will let you know if there's stuff that I've picked up that I do want to trade. If you do want to trade with me, then please let me know because I've got a lot of stuff that I need to get rid of. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the next however long this video will be. Because there's a lot to get in. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, here we are. I'm going to start off with a very familiar setup of board on a bed, which is the easiest way to show things. I was going to do this in front of the camera with the green screen and all that, but the double-sided, um, uh, what's it called, Velcro that I've got up on the walls is sort of coming down, so I had no way of putting the green screen up on the wall. I was going to do this in my intergalactic spaceship, but because of no green screen, I cannot board my intergalactic spaceship, which is very annoying. So yeah, I'm not going to use this yet. I'm going to get started with the consoles, which I will show you. I'll film separate footage for the ones that are plugged in, and for the ones that aren't, I will show you here. So to start off with the ones that are plugged in, first off, I don't think I showed this yet. I grabbed a fat PlayStation 2 from a family friend. It also came with a Mega Drive Model 2, but that's gone into storage with, along with my other however many Mega Drives I have spare. Quite a lot. Um, so yeah, that was a pretty good deal. I got the whole lot for about 25 quid. That's 25 pounds to those of you who don't speak English slang. Um, it came with a lot of games, but I'll go over those when we get on to the games. So, moving on. I grabbed myself a PlayStation 3, which I've talked about in a few different videos. So, I'm loving the PlayStation 3. Got tons of exclusives with it. I love the exclusives on the PlayStation. They're much better than the Xbox exclusives. I must say that I prefer the PlayStation 3 to the Xbox 360. Very nice. So, I'll get into the games I have for that when we get to that stage. And what else did I buy? Okay, I bought a 32X. Eww. Why did I buy a 32X? Because it completes my Mega Drive hardware collection. I don't have it plugged in yet, I don't have all the cables for it to hook it up to the Mega Drive Model 1, but I will do very soon, but I now own a 32X. I don't know if it works, but I was assured it did. 32X. 32X. I also bought, for no particular reason, a yellow Mega Drive Model 1. Very snazzy. I'd like a white one. The white one would look very, very nice. So you got the Japanese Mega Drive logo, you got Sega. Um, yeah. I've already... I'm not looking to keep this, I'm looking to trade this. I've already got somebody who wants it, but they haven't got the money for it yet. So if anybody else wants this at the right price, then you can have it, but I'm saving it for that person first. And if they do want it, then they can have it, so... If anyone's interested, you can have this. I'll also throw in a bunch of games if the price is right. The price is right. So yeah, I bought a yellow Mega Drive Model 1. And that's it for the consoles that I bought in the past. And no it isn't. No it isn't. I'm forgetting the big one. The Vectrex. I will not be putting the Vectrex in screen. I'll show you footage from the Vectrex episode, which I'll also link to in the description box below. Okay, so Vectrex. I'm loving this Vectrex. I bought a, an extra game for it, which is which wasn't included in the Vectrex video, so I'll be showing that off in a in a bit. But yeah, Vectrex is a fantastic console, and if you can find one at the right price, they go for a lot nowadays. Then do grab one because you need to ex really experience the Vectrex. My 
footage and everyone else's footage that I've ever seen does not do the Vectrex justice. It's a fantastic console that needs to be experienced. So if you're in the looking to get one, then do get one. Okay, moving on. Right, I'm going to talk about Xbox 360 games here. Now, I've bought a bunch of Xbox 360 games recently. Here they are. As you can see, they're all Japanese. Yeah, I'm loving my Japanese shooters. I love my Japanese shooters. Um, the Now, games for the Xbox usually aren't region coded, but Japan tend to region code their games, which is extremely irritating because there are some fantastic Japanese games out there that are region locked. And I'm looking to get a Japanese Xbox 360, but that will be a long time away yet because I don't see the point in buying one when I've only got a few Japanese exclusive titles. So let's go through this lot. I'll separate these out first because these three are all the same game. You got Dodonpachi Daifukatsu version 1.5, Dodonpachi Daifukatsu Black Label, and Dodonpachi Resurrection Deluxe Edition, which is that one. It's not that one for some reason. Okay, right, let's go through these. These two are region locked, so they won't play on my PAL 360. So why have I got all three? Because it's a great completion of the Dai, uh, Dodonpachi Daifukatsu collection. So this is Dodonpachi Daifukatsu version 1.5. The differences are slight between these two. I think the black label has more arrange modes than this version. But this is Dodonpachi Daifukatsu black label. And this is the localised version of Dodonpachi Daifukatsu 1.5 Dodonpachi Resurrection. This is the deluxe edition which also includes a soundtrack which is quite nice I might add. So what does this include? Like I said this is Dodonpachi Daifukatsu version 1.5 now you can upgrade this to I think there's a 1.51 DLC which costs 80 Microsoft points, I'm not sure what it adds. There's also the black label as DLC which is I think it's 800 Microsoft points, I might be wrong about this but the black label just adds a range mode as far as I'm aware but that's the Dodonpachi Daifukatsu I'm going to call it the Trilogy because that's really what it is. So yeah that's those. And I've got Mishihima Sama Futari, I think that's what it's called, I can't quite remember. Mishihima Sami Futari, Sama Futari, which is another great cave shooter. This one is region free, which is awesome. This is much like the Dodonpachi series, but it's got a much lighter feel to it, and it doesn't feel as hectic as the other games, which I like, because a lot of the times in the Dodonpachi Daifukatsu series, well, Dodonpachi series in general, most of the time there are like you get into situations where you can't avoid bullets and you will die but I do enjoy this game and it's version 1.5 so yeah that's Mishihima Sama Futari or something and then this arrived today today this is Moochie Moochie Pork and Pink Sweets so it's two games in one and I'm loving this this is fantastic this is there's a reason why it's on the cave the best, and this is also region free, so that's great. Um, the soundtrack on these two games is epic. Now, I don't know why Dodonpachi Resurrection Deluxe Edition included a soundtrack and this didn't, because the soundtrack on this is far greater than Dodonpachi Resurrection soundtrack. But like I said, this is two games in one. This is a very easy game to get into as opposed to the other shooters that I've just shown. This is very fun. I've been enjoying this a lot and like I said the music really does make this game it's fantastic so if you if you're looking to pick up a great shooter for the 360 and you want or you don't want to buy a Japanese 360 then get this Muchi Muchi Pink Muchi Muchi Pork and Pink Sweets fantastic game highly recommend it so moving away from the 360 I'm gonna move on to the PS3 games that I've picked up in the past five months. Okay now most of these games were purchased 
Um, in town, I, I'm about. I think two of these games I purchased online. So most of these games are purchased from high um, high street retailers, which is unusual for me. I tend to buy every single thing that I own online. So I'll start with the games that came with the 360. We got Ashes Cricket 2009. Nobody cares. What else we got? Um, what else came with this? Street Fighter 4 in a destroyed case. What else we got? Need for Speed Undercover, one of the worst Need for Speed games ever made. I think that was it that came with it. Pretty sure that was it, yeah. There we got Ashes, Cricket 2009, very tattered case. Very extremely tattered, the manual is just torn across. Haven't played it, don't think I will play it, but... Yeah, Cricket. We got Need for Speed Undercover. Just a man, just a uh, disc and a manual. Like I said, one of the worst Need for Speed games ever created. We got Street Fighter 4 with a destroyed case. I'm not sure how someone does this to their case. Did he drop it? Did he drop it from a building? To the roof of a building? Because I don't know. But the manual's tattered and yeah, the case is sort of destroyed really. So I need to swap this for the cricket case. I haven't done it yet. Right, these are in no particular order. I'm just going to grab them as I find them. Ico, Shadow of the Colossus, fantastic. If you own a PS3, you need this collection. I bought this, this is one of the two games that I bought online. I'm loving this. This is fantastic. I remember owning Ico back on the PS2 when it was new. And I didn't understand it. So I got rid of it pretty much instantly. But I'm so disappointed that I did because now that I can really appreciate Ico and Shadow of the Colossus, I'm really enjoying them. So yeah, a great um, collection to pick up, and it's but it is quite expensive because these are two very sought after games, and they are fantastic. And this H these HD remakes really do the games justice. So that's Ico and Shadow of the Classics on the Classics HD range, which is also which also does have a lot of other great games on the range. Next up, um, SSX. I decided to pick this up after hearing all the hype about a new SSX game. Well, I'd already heard the hype, but I decided to pick this up to see what it was like, and it's crap to be honest. I much more, I enjoyed SSX Tricky much more than this. This is one to, one to miss, really. Um, Dark Void, picked up Dark Void. Don't remember much about this. I've played it, but I don't remember much, but yeah, Dark Void. Motorstorm. I love the Motorstorm series. Yeah, the only problem with this is it's part of the Platinum range, which does look odd on the shelf. In fact, all PS3 games look odd on the shelf because they changed the design of the cases halfway through the PS3's lifespan. But yeah, Motorstorm. Can't go wrong with a bit of Motorstorm. Um, Red Dead Redemption. I own this on the 360. Bought it on the PS3 because it's a fantastic game. I'll likely get rid of this in the 360 version if it ever comes out on PC, which it really needs to. This is complete with the map, manual, everything. In great condition for the price I paid for it, which I can't remember what I did pay for it. So, yeah. Red Dead Redemption. Great game to pick up. Gran Turismo 5. Not much that can be said, really. Gran Turismo 5. Haven't played it. Because I know what it is, it's Gran Turismo. Who doesn't know what Gran Turismo is? Any problem, like I said with the other game? It's on the Platinum Collection. It's very cheap cases for the Platinum Collection. So yeah, Gran Turismo 5. Um, Bayonetta. I bought this because I heard a lot of hype about it. The case is in very bad shape. But I personally found this game to be quite boring. Others might be able to get into it, but I certainly couldn't. That's Bayonetta. Dark Sector. Um, don't remember playing this, same as Dark Void. But it was all complete, it's all there. So yeah, case is a bit dirty, but not too bad. So yeah, Dark Sector. Um, Heavy Rain, I love this. 
my god, I was gripped the entire way through playing it. I'd already watched a Let's Play of it all the way through, which is, uh... I can't remember what it was now. But yeah, this is a fantastic game. If you own a PS3, then you need this game. And there's a lot of people that go around bashing this game, but I think it, they're unfair to do so. Yes, the voice acting is questionable in some places, but it really does keep you gripped. And, I mean, you can get a different story on multiple playthroughs. This is a fantastic game to own. Highly recommend this game for any PlayStation owner. Um, Uncharted 3, Drake's Deception. I love this. It looks amazing. The gameplay is fantastic. It just feels like... Ooh, damage there. It just feels like a Tomb Raider game. How a Tomb Raider game should be done. Uh, whereas that new reboot, that's how a Tomb Raider game shouldn't be done. Because that reboot is utter garbage. But this game is fantastic. Another one I'd highly recommend getting on the PlayStation 3. Um, oh, oh. Resistance Fall of Man. I think this might have been one that came with the PS3 as well. I can't quite remember, but... This is one to av one to avoid, one to miss if you can. Disc is enough. The tacky shape. So yeah, this was definitely one that came with the PS3 for discs in that kind of shape. I think it was. I can't really remember. But yeah, this is one to avoid. It's very boring. It looks aged. I'm not sure what year it came out. Um, 2007 on the box. So yeah, this is very dated. I would avoid this one. And we got Resistance 3. This one improves on the formula of. Resistance Fall of Man, no manual, which is irritating, but this is an okay game, but I wouldn't recommend it in long sittings, it does get very boring, but it's far better experience than Resistance Fall of Man, so yeah, if you've got a choice between Fall of Man and this one, get this one. Killzone 3, now what I played of this, I did quite enjoy it, I was expecting your average bland shooter really, but... No, this is quite quite an okay game. And to be honest, when did it come out? <coughs> uh, it's quite new. It's not a bad looking game, but it's not a good looking game, but that's why you have to that's what you have to like play with with the consoles. Some of the early games do look bad, some of the newer games might look bad, but this is an okay game. So if you're in the market for it and you can get this cheap, then do pick it up because it's okay. It's not too bad. Um Haze. Now this is one to avoid. I bought it because it's, well, Free Radical. And they made the Time Splitter series. And we all know how amazing the Time Splitter series is. This isn't amazing. You should avoid this. It's your generic bland soldier shooter. I'm a super soldier. I will kill everything and everyone. So yeah, Haze. They also do drugs. So yeah, avoid this. Um. Eat Lead, The Return of Matt Hazard. I remember buying this very recently from CEX. It's in very nice shape. Um, I haven't played it yet. Oop, my new up. But it seems to be a parody of old school gaming. So that's always fun. So yeah, Eat Lead, The Return of Matt Hazard. I haven't tried it. Don't know whether to recommend it or not, but if it's cheap, why not buy it? It might be fun. And the other game that I bought online, 3D Dot Game Heroes. Haven't played this one yet either, but this is mint. I think it was still in the still sealed when I bought it. I bought this after recommendation from Pete Dawes video. He made a video of PS3 exclusive, I think it was, or it was either PS3 exclusives or RPGs that he likes to play, and this was in it. So I decided to buy it. I haven't tried it yet, but it might be a very good game. So we will see. And that, my friends is my collection of PS3 games that I bought in the past five months. So now, I will move on to PSP games. Okay, so whilst I'm on the subject of PSP games, I think I'd better mention that um, the PS3 also came with the PSP. This is a Japanese. Is it Japanese? I think it's Japanese. Yes, it's definitely Japanese. It's a Japanese PSP 1000. There it is. The weird thing with this is they flip the X and the circle buttons around on the menus. But yeah, it came with a Japanese PSP 2000, so it also came with some games. The games that it came with were Dynasty Warriors. Not sure if I've showed these off in previous videos, or if I've shown some of these games off in previous videos, I apologise, but 
that's the hand you're dealt, so deal with it. Yeah, so Dynasty Warriors, in with it. Haven't played it. Dynasty Warriors, if you feel so inclined. Um, what else came with it? Metal Gear Portable Ops, I think came with it. I'm not sure. Actually, I think it was just Dynasty Warriors that came in it. Because I remember buying all these separately. Yeah, this is one I bought separately. It doesn't come with a manual, but comes with a bit of gump. Bit of bump, bit of gump. Uh, has a missing clip there, so the disc falls off. UMD. Two ninety nine. Not bad. That'll be a solid portable ops. This came with the PSP. Juiced Eliminator, because I'd never buy this. Missing the manual. Yeah. Juiced Eliminator came with the PSP. Um, Kazook bought this because of the cover. Great covers make me buy the game. That's some old school thinking right there. You don't buy games on covers nowadays, do you? But this one, I had to buy it. I don't know what it's about. I haven't played it. I haven't really touched my PSP in a very long time, but I still buy games for it. But from the description, it's sort of a bunch of mini games. But yeah, Kazook. Very good condition. Now, I think this might have been in a previous video, 30 Half Minute Hero. But I'm not sure, so I'm showing it off again. This is an extremely quick game, you're given 30 seconds to complete it. That's it, 30 seconds to complete it, after that you die and have to restart. It's insane, basically. And I bought Lumineers, Lumineers. Luminous Puzzle Conf Puzzle Fusion, yeah, Confusion. So yeah, Luminous Puzzle Fusion, another puzzle game, obviously. And Darkstalkers Chronicles covered in stickers. I love Darkstalkers; it's such a great fighting game. So yeah, Darkstalkers Chronicle, the Chaos Tower. It's a shame about all the stickers they put on it. I can't, couldn't get it off because it just leaves residue on it, but I will get them off eventually. So yeah, Darkstalkers Chronicles of Chaos Tower. Oh! Namco Museum Battle Collection! Woo! Three classic games from Namco. Not much more to be said really. You've got the likes of Pac-Man, Dig Dug, Galaga, Rally X, and a few more, so worth picking up, definitely. Then, Off-Road. This is in very bad condition. The um, cover is extremely um, warped. The menu is okay and the disc is okay, but the cover is extremely warped. But this is a good off-roading game. The graphics are very good for the PSP. So yeah, off-road. Outrun 2006, coast to coast. What much? What more can be said, really? It's Outrun. Nothing more can be said. Everybody loves a bit of Outrun. Stick on the manual, don't like that though. Then we got Ratchet and Clank, Size Matters. 8 99 that's not how much I paid for it. So yeah, Ratchet and Clank, Size Matters. I haven't really played it, but I do enjoy a bit of Ratchet and Clank. So yeah, pretty good. Then, you'll be surprised by this one. I saw it on the shelf and I just had to buy it because it looks so hilarious. It's a hentai UMD video. Haven't watched it, I don't think I'm going to. It was 2 99 so I thought why not buy it just for a laugh. I mean it's crazy. I've never seen anything like this before. Why would anybody trade this in? Why would I buy it? I could, I could imagine what the guy was thinking as I was buying it. I bought a bunch of other PSP games with it so they wouldn't notice. But that is hilarious. That Blue Girl Returns, Demon Seed, Shikima Lust. So yeah, that's just an obscure one to add to the collection, but I thought it was absolutely hilarious. I don't know why, why anybody would buy it, but I've bought it. Because why not? How many people have got this in their collection? Not many, but I have. So there you go. So that's the PSP games. Now, before I move on to anything else, I will be moving on to something else. I bought a HD PVR too. 
it's not in the box, this box is empty, it's all set up, but yeah, I've got a HD PBR2, it does its job brilliantly, I'm really enjoying this. It captures some great footage, only problem I find is because Sony is such, I'm not going to say it, they um, disabled um, outputting the video signal, well, basically, you can't record um, HDMI out from the PS3, because Sony disabled that feature which is a bitch really we can record using the component cables I mean the picture does degrade a bit but it still looks okay and this does a fantastic job of recording the Wii, the 360 and the uh, PS3 I did make a video on this tried plugging it up to my DVR, didn't work haven't fiddled around with that since but I assume it's not going to work even though it should really I might try it again once I get a bit more information on this thing and see if I can start recording some retro consoles through my DVR which would be fan dabby dozy but yeah, hasty PBR2 yeah, good stuff okay, moving on I think I'll show off the Vectrex games this one was a recent pickup so these, as I mentioned in the Vectrex video were all with the Vectrex including Mindstorm which was a built-in game, this is the overlay for it. So we've got a flipper pinball, tattered box, not going to open it, this comes with the overlay and the game, no manual. We've got Berserk, which comes with the overlay and the game, no manual. And Fortress of Narzard, again not going to open it because the box is a bit tattered, comes with the game, the overlay and the manual. Then I bought this one recently, this is in very good condition, I paid about £3 for this. Cosmic Chasm comes with the game and the overlay comes in this little slip cover so yeah, that's Cosmic Chasm for the Vectrex so that is my Vectrex collection so far five games so yeah fantastic loving the Vectrex like I said get a Vectrex Okay, moving on to the PlayStation 1. I've got quite a few PlayStation 1 games. So we've got Dungeons and Dragons, Iron and Blood, Warriors of Ravenloft. Now, is that not the longest title to a game you've ever seen? So yeah, it's a Dungeons and Dragons game. Pretty much expected. Haven't played it. Will play it at some point, but not yet. The case is very cracked. Um, comes with a manual. The game. All these are in pretty good shape. Then Shadow Madness, which is a rental copy, which comes in its rental case, both discs. Rental only, not for resale. So that I'm not sure if that's rare or not, but it's a rental copy. Why couldn't PlayStation games have come in these cases anyway? I mean, what's wrong with these cases? These are pretty good cases, except for the fact you can't fit a manual in, but most games didn't have two discs. Soul Blade, I featured this in a previous video so that was just something I picked up by accident. Rodos Jailbreak, some of that. Got Final Fantasy 9, disc 2 of 4. Yeah. Destruction Derby War promo disc, I featured that before as well. Gauntlet Legends in some strange um, jewel case. I'm not sure if this is how it came but yeah, Gauntlet Legends. It looks like it might have been printed by someone, but this looks too high quality for it to have been printed, so any news on that, any information would be appreciated. Um, Alundra 2. No front cover, but manual and disc. Case is a bit smashed on this corner. There we go, Alundra 2. These are almost as bad as the Dreamcast cases, but not quite. Um, here's a smashed case. Look at that. Need for Speed 2, the greatest Need for Speed game of all time. This is my first Need for Speed game. I had it on PC when it was first released, and I played it a lot like a size up manual. But yeah, the greatest Need for Speed game ever made, Need for Speed 2, in a smash case. South Park Rally, your generic South Park game from Acclaim. They're, Acclaim made a lot of crap. They made some good, but they made a lot of crap, and this is one of the crap. This case is smashed as well. You got the manual and the disc and everything. Showing that off camera a bit. I apologise. SimCity 2000! Alongside SimCity 4, 
this is the best SimCity game of all time, like I said, alongside SimCity 4. Look at the size of that manual. Crazy. So yeah, SimCity 2000. Worms! Platinum edition, but I don't mind. Worms, we all know what Worms is, as ever. Great Worms, pretty thick manual. With all the stupid languages spoken in your Tucker Touring Cars 2. Yep, your average Tucker Touring Car game with the manual and the disc. Now this is in fairly good shape compared to Tucker Touring Car Championship 1. Look at look at this. What is this? Did someone spill milk on it? Did someone paint the cover? Plus it's smashed. No, look, I think someone tried to glue the front cover to the front of the case. I mean, why would somebody do this? It just saddens me. Even though it's just a Tucker Touring Car game, I mean, why? Yeah. Tucker Touring Car Championship. Here's one I featured in a previous pickups video, but here it is again because it came in a bunch of other stuff I bought. Total Driving. This is a pretty good driving game, this is. I mean, the turning controls are a bit strange, but. I do recommend picking this up, this is a very good driving game, the graphics are fantastic for PS1 standards. Star Wars Jed Star Wars Episode 1 Jedi Power Battles. Rest in peace, LucasArts. Not a Star Wars fan. Oh, smash. Likely won't play this. It's also taped there, so it looks like that's either part of the factory ceiling or someone's taped over it. I think it's part of the factory ceiling, I'm not sure. It might be taped. But yeah, not a fan. Star Wars, so I'll likely skip this one. Yes, yeah, Star Wars Episode 1 Jedi Power Battles. Um, another bit of a tatty case Spec Ops Ranger Elite. Um, from what I've seen, this looks like one to avoid. But half the pages were out of the manual, so I'll put them back inside. But yeah, Spec Ops Ranger Elite. Now, here's a good one. Doom! In the classic double case. Doom. With cracks all over it, but Doom! What can you say? Doom! Everyone loves a bit of Doom. Completely pointless other side of the case, but still. Doom! Oh, how's breaking loose? Yeah. Crash Bandicoot Warped. This is the only Crash Bandicoot game I never played. Well, from the PS1 eras. Era. Got the disc and then winter releases 98, which is odd. No manual. Did it come with a manual? Not sure, but no manual. So Crash Bandicoot Warped. Yeah, Crash Bandicoot. Command and Conquer Red Alert. I always seem to find that Command and Conquer games that I pick up are in fantastic shape. This is another one that's in fantastic shape. I'm not a fan of Command and Conquer. I do not like this genre of games, real-time strategy, but this is in such good shape that it needed to be picked up. So there you go, Command and Conquer, Red Alert. In brilliant shape. Buster Move 3DX, or Buster Move 3DX. Um, another one that's in very bad shape. My my discs never ended up like this when, the, when I had my PlayStation back in the day. But everyone else's did seem to. My discs were never scratched, my cases were never smashed. I don't know what people did with their cases. They obviously stood on them. So yeah, Buster Move 3DX. This will go with Buster Move 2 and Buster Move 4 that I also own. Micro Machines V3. Everybody loves a bit of Micro Machines no matter what console it's on. And this was originally $49.99. Crazy. So yeah, Micro Machines V3. Not much to say. Another great Codemasters title, they need to make another great rally game because I'm getting annoyed by the lack of rally games from Codemasters. Um, Hardcore 4x4, speaking of off-roading games, this isn't one of the good ones. I have this on the Saturn and it's very clunky and quite boring and you can't really tell where you're going most of the time. So it is complete, it's an old school double sided case, completely pointless second side as most of the games had. So yeah, Hardcore 4x4. Now, Duke Nukem, with my terrible Duke Nukem accent, yeah, come get some. So yeah, Duke Nukem, I don't need to explain Duke Nukem, everybody knows what Duke Nukem is, so yeah, this is just Duke Nukem 3D, ported to the PlayStation, brilliant. 
can't go wrong with a bit of Jubilee on 3D. Unless of course you're playing the Mega Drive version, the Brazilian Mega Drive version, you can go wrong with that. And Driver 2, back on the streets, my least played driver game. I remember owning this when it first came out. I don't remember having two discs, but I remember owning it when it first came out. And I was quite intrigued by the fact that you could get out your car. But when I realised there was not much to do out the car, I sort of gave up with it. But yeah, Driver 2, back out on the street. And that's it for the PlayStation games I picked up, so I will move on to some more games! Some Sega Saturn games! Now I'm not sure if I featured these two in a previous pickups video, but I think I might have, but I'm going to show them off anyway. It's Japanese issues of the Sega Ages, Outrun and Afterburner 2. Pick these up. That's all I need to say. Pick these up. If you're a Sega fan, pick these up. Don't get the Sega Ages collection that was issued in... America or Europe because that's not as good as this get these these are in mint condition they don't have the spine cards but other than that they are in mint condition love it fantastic pick them up menus are in English so you don't need to oh this came with a spine card I forgot this game with a spine card so yeah this game with a spine card lovely so yeah pick these up like I said, the menus are in English, so you don't need to understand Japanese to navigate the menus. Which is a plus as well. So yeah. Outrun, afterburn, so you pick them up. I'm not going to say anything else. Pick them up. You owe it to yourself to pick these up. Even if you don't own a Sega Saturn or don't have any inkling of buying a Sega Saturn, just pick these up anyway. Because Outrun and Afterburner. Then moving on to a few PAL games. Got Siberia. I hate the PAL cases. Now, some of you may have heard I'm working on a cover project. I'll talk about that a bit more when I show off the Dreamcast games I got, but I'm going to be making covers for Sega Saturn games because the covers that we got in Europe absolutely suck. So yeah, Siberia smashed. Yeah, haven't played it. Not sure if it's worth getting. This looks like a generic shooter. Hexen! I remember playing this when it came out on the PC. Look, look at the damage, look, it's horrible. These cardboard cases. This is, this is on the build engine that Duke Nukem 3D was created on. And it's sort of a medieval sort of demon thing. It's an okay game to pick up, Hexen. I do recommend picking it up if you can find it for cheap, and the PS1 games are falling down. Cue the Iron Maiden music. There's Shell Shock, look at that cover art. That is disgusting. It looks like uh, Interstate 76 gone wrong. So yeah, Shell Shock, no idea what it's like. Looks like your average boring tank game. Grok, Legends of the Gobbos. These are better cases. Some of the later cases came in these sort of things. Whereas these are just printed on cardboard. These are in a, like a plastic sleeve, more like DVD cases. These are much better cases. They're still there. Difficult to open and not very good. See so yeah, it, Croc. Goes into the Gobbos on a Sega Saturn. Street Racer! But it's also crap cover art. G average Kart Racer. You know what to expect. If you played Mario Kart, then you've played Street Racer. Uh, Blazing Dragons. No idea. That dragon looks stoned. He's definitely blazing something. Um, looks kind of like... Uh, oh, I can't remember what it's called. Nope. But yeah, blazing dragons. By Crystal Dynamics. By Crystal Dynamics, no less. Not sure how I should recommend it. I haven't played it. Um, Firestorm Thunderhawk 2. I think I picked this up before. I'm pretty sure I have. This is what happens when you make cardboard cases. Thanks, Sega. You always make crap cases, didn't you? This is your average shooter, cockpit shooter. Yeah. So pretty mediocre pickups in the Sega Saturn range, except for to Outrun and Afterburner, which you will pick up. You will. There's no choice. You're going to pick them up. Simple as. Okay, moving on to Dreamcast. Not much to talk about in the land of the Dreamcast, other than... Shenmue, 
Do I really need to talk about anything else? I've mentioned Shenmue. I mean, I could end this video right here and people will be satisfied. Shenmue. Hold on, I need a sip of this coffee. I mean, uh, this I picked up, I'm not sure if I featured it in other pickups videos, but this is complete and boxed and everything. I did have the Japanese version of Shenmue, the original one, complete box. I still have it, but I'm looking to trade it to a friend of mine who is currently living in Japan. He wants it, so I'm keeping it for him. But if anybody else wants it first, then they can have the prices right. But no, I'll probably keep it for him. There's a bit of damage there, but Shenmue. All I need now is Shenmue 2. I have it for the Xbox, but I better not mention that, otherwise people are getting mad. Okay. And I got Sonic Adventure 2. Now I can talk about the cover project. What I'm doing is I'm creating covers, DVD covers, for each and every Dreamcast game, Saturn game, PlayStation game, um, whatever. Take your, take your pick, really. Consoles that had crap cases. And it, I, I haven't found the time, really, to do it. These are Wii cases. I was using black cases, but I decided to buy a bunch of Wii sports games and white Wii cases because I think they look much better than the black cases. So yeah, Sonic Adventure 2 on the Dreamcast. You owe it to yourself to pick up Sonic Adventure. It's one of the better 3D Sonic games. Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure 2. So yeah, Sonic Adventure 2. Moving on to things that aren't games but are gaming related. Here's a bunch of stuff that I bought from an American seller. I've got a GTA 4 art book. I didn't know there was art in GTA 4 but here's an art book. I didn't know GTA 4 had art. I thought they just cobbled it together out of bits left over from San Andreas. That's why it was such a mess but yeah, GTA 4 art book. And Dragon from Russia. I think this is video game related. I can't remember. Yeah. Um, Xbox Official Magazine Demo Issue Number 1. Not sure why that's on the back. But yeah. But Sega Electronic Press Kit 2006 from E3 2006. Um, yeah. Got an SNK Playmore Calendar from 2006. Which is pretty, got some pretty neat artwork on it, really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we got the map. What is this? Prince Island map. I think this is something to do with, uh, it's Nat from Namco. I think it's something to do with, Ah, oh, that game where you run a ball and you roll around and stuff. What's that called? Ah! <laughs> but yeah, it's a map from a random game. Katamari Damashi, that's what I'm thinking of. Katamari. I think it's something to do with that, I'm not sure. Then we got Welcome to the Williamette Parkview Mall. This is something to do with Dead Rising 2. Yeah, it's a little brochure to do with the mall in Dead Rising. I think it's Dead Rising or Dead Rising 2. It's Dead, the original one, I think. Whatever. Um, we've got a bungee card. Is this from Halo? I'm not a fan of Halo, so you'll have to enlighten me. Speaking of Halo, I also have this card in my wallet. Put it in my wallet, not sure why. It's sort of a Halo 3 card. It says on the back that there's money on it. So there might still be money on it. It was issued in 2007, so maybe it'll still work. I love the noise these things make. Let's put this back in my wallet and move my wallet. Um, got the same thing with the Dead or Alive thing. Extreme Beach Volleyball. Yep. We got a GTA, <laughs> it's just random junk, GTA San Andreas poster, it's just a map from San Andreas. You all know what this looks like, you've all played San Andreas and there's a map on the other side. This is good because I drew on my map when San Andreas was first released and drew up all the secrets and the weird stuff. So yeah, map. 
Got a Tomb Raider card, Tomb Raider Legend card. This is pretty cool. I like this one. It's very small, but it's a Tomb Raider card from Tomb Raider Legend. Pretty sweet. A Witcher comic, limited edition apparently. Not sure what's so limited about it. Maybe it's that cut that scuff there. This is pretty detailed artwork in this, but it's one of those comics that you really get bored reading because the artwork's so bland and depressing. It is quite dull and depressing, though, although it's very detailed. Very dingy and dull. Too much speech. Nobody cares. Got a Play magazine, which is an anime and gaming magazine. This is from 2005, September 2005, no less. Which features anime and games. I mean, this is a fantastic magazine. Anime and games together. Woo! Can't go wrong, really. Um, but yeah, it's from 2005. So yeah, not to do, not anything to do with the Play magazine. I'm going to show you in a bit. Everything keeps falling down. In Q, Iron Maiden music. Then we got Dead or Alive calendar, Dead or Alive Four calendar with coffee stain from 2006. Which has just got the girls of Dead or Alive just got their faces. Oh, sorry about that. I mean, it would have been a bit better if it had their lower, you know, it's just their faces. And I mean, that's, is that a girl? Don't even know. I don't follow the Dead or Alive series much. That's a calendar. Discs. Dreamcast disc. Um, very expensive. Yeah, this is uh, Bangai O. Oh. Of the Dreamcast. So yeah, I'm not sure if this is rare or not, but I don't think it is. It might be a rare issue of it, but I'm not sure. Then we got Dreamcast Generator Volume Two, which has got a bunch of demos on, I think. Then th what is this? D-Day code name overall. Something to do with the war. I don't know why that's there. Then we got Dreamcast Magazine. Issue 11 from February 2011. This has got a bunch of demos on as well. So yeah. In customer disc. There we go. Moving on to Carmageddon items. Now I've picked up a bunch in the past five months. Starting with this. I'm not going to go into too much detail about these because I want to make a separate video on them. Like I said I would in my Carmageddon collection video which was over a year ago. But I said when I pick up stuff can't get stuff, I will make a video about it. So I will, eventually. But before I talk about those, that lot I just shown off came with hats as well. Got an Atari Game Freaks hat and a Dead or Alive 2 hat. So it came came with those. Interesting. Um, this, I've never seen anything like this. One of the users on the CWA board, Can't Get Webmasters Alliance board, sent me a message randomly and said that he'd saw this and hasn't seen it anywhere before and asked if I'd like it. He kindly bought it for me and sent it to me without me paying him. Then I did pay him because of course I could not. I couldn't not pay him. And this, I mean it's not anything special but it adds to my collection and I'm very pleased to have it so thank you very much Fireman. But like I said I'll be making a separate video on this detailing it a bit more. Also picked up Mega 3 pack. It's just a pack of games including Carmageddon. Yeah, Mega 3 pack, nothing special. Again, I won't go too much into it. Then I picked up Play 69. Is it 69? I just assume it's 44. Why did I get 69 from? I know where I got 69 from. Because I'm looking for a Play magazine that had a huge Carmageddon. A Carmageddon, a huge Destruction Derby Raw reviewing. But I can't figure out which one it is. It's one of the issue 60 somethings. But I can't figure out which one and I can't find it anywhere. But yeah, this. It's got a Carmageddon. There it is. Got the PlayStation version, blah, blah, blah. It's got a few um, development stuff, development screenshots, which is pretty cool. I'll go over that a bit more in the video exclusively on the Carmageddon items. Also came with the Cheats book that magazines used to come with. So yeah, play issue 44. Now, I've got another one in this drawer next to the camera. I've got a couple actually, which I don't think I've shown off. Got 
PlayStation magazine. Don't think I've shown these off, I might have. Issue 60. Now this is the one I thought had the Destruction Derby Raw review in. It does have a big section of it, but this is not the right magazine. That's the sole reason I bought it, because it has Destruction Derby Raw in. There it says it. But I don't think it was this magazine. I think it was the Play magazine. So yeah, it's issue 60 of PlayStation magazine. And I got issue 61 of PlayStation magazine. Same reason, I think. Because I thought it had the um, Destruction Derby Raw review in, which it doesn't. Um, I did get another Carmageddon um, magazine. It was an American magazine, but I can't seem to find it. Um, it'll be somewhere. Okay, so, moving on to the Mega Drive games. Now, there's quite a bunch of Mega Drive games. Okay, right, before I move on to Mega Drive games, I forgot that I bought a bunch of PS2 games within the past five months, so I'll be showing those off. Remember all that junk I showed you with the Dead or Alive posters and stuff? This is the thing that came in it. It's an NTSC U, so American, copy of Fancy Star 11 online. So, I don't really want this, plus it won't play on my PlayStations anyway. So, if any of you Americans want this, or any of you people in this country, I mean, this manuals feel very nice. Is this rare? I'm not sure. I have to do my research on it. But if anybody wants this, then... Well, it's a not for resale copy, so I think it might be rare. Um, yeah, they can have it for a trade if they like. So yeah, if you're watching and you want this, you can have it. Just send me a message, let me know. So yeah, that's Fantasy Star 11 online. Speaking, that's why did I pick this up? I picked this up because I used to own it when it first came out. And I remember it being a, sort of a follow-up to the Rograf series. This I remember being very fun. I haven't played it since I bought it. But yeah, speaking, I have very fond memories of this game. So hopefully it's still as good as I remember. Um, Spyro, a new beginning, still sealed. Got a little bit of Spyro. I haven't opened this, but the disc's obviously loose inside. But yeah, Spyro, a new beginning. The legend of Spyro, a new beginning. Uh, Dynasty Tactics. No idea. But Dynasty Tactics. Orphan Skion Skion Orphan Skion of Sorcery Seems like an RPG Yeah it's an action RPG Barbarian's Blade Khan uh, Another series that I'm not a fan of Age of Empires, this is Age of Empires 2 The Age of Kings, I think this is another RTS game, and like I said I'm not a fan of RTS games. This is Age of Empires 2 The Age of Kings, why is there sellotape there? I'll have to get that off. But yeah, Age of Empires 2 Age of Kings, if anybody wants this, they can have it. Warriors of Might and Magic. Oh, I am, I do like the Might and Magic series of games. Pretty sweet. And we've got some lemmings. Everybody loves a bit of lemmings. Including me. This is one of the later PS2 cases, I think. Without the memory card slot. When was this made? 2060, I'm one of the later games. But lemmings, yeah, lemmings. Forbidden Siren 2. Horror game. I'm not a fan of horror games, but if they're old enough and the graphics don't scare me, then I'll play them. But yeah, Forbidden Siren 2. FIFA Football 2004. I know you all want me to trade this game with you. This came with the PS2 bundle that I was talking about. Nobody cares. Medal of Honor Rising Sun. A bit damaged, a bit tatty. I hate the Medal of Honor series to be honest. If anybody wants this, they can have it. Now oh, it's supposed to be on there. Yeah, if anybody wants a copy of Medal of Honor Rising Sun, they can have it. I don't want it. Picked up Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty again. So yeah, duplicate. So if anybody wants this, they can have it. Comes with no manual. But like I said, if you want it, it's yours. And Driver 3. I think I am the only person in the world that actually enjoyed this game. I mainly enjoy it because it's so buggy. But yeah. Driver 3. With a big scratch on it, so this might not work. 
and finally Metal Slug 5 in fantastic condition. I am a huge fan of the Metal Slug series. I like a Neo Geo, but they cost a fortune, so I don't have a Neo Geo. But I need to pick up the rest of the Metal Gear, Metal Gear, Metal Slug games that are on the PlayStation 2, including the anthology that comes with. Is it an anthology? I think it's just a full collection of all the games. Yeah, Metal Slug 5. Love it! Moving on to GameCube games, I think I've showed this one off in a previous pick of video, but it's World Racing, extremely tatty, World Racing. Then I picked up Worms Blast from Games World Bobmin, it's a fun Worms game, and that's it, that's my GameCube collection. Ah, there's a memory card there. I play my GameCube games on my Wii. Now going back to the Dreamcast, I bought a USB 2 card reader, which is a, like it says, it's an SD card reader, as you'd imagine your average USB card reader, like this one, where you plug the SD card into it, then plug it into USB, and you can get a World Data off the SD card. This one, you plug the SD card into it, that's the wrong way around, you plug the SD card into it, then you plug this into the serial port on the Dreamcast and you can run all sorts of homebrew off it using Dreamshell. Haven't tried it, but I've seen a lot of people who have and it works pretty well, so yeah. Drop the other end. You can buy these off eBay for pretty cheap. They are from China, but the, the amount of people that complain about Chinese eBayers, I haven't found a problem with them yet. It's just a waiting time for the items to come, but that's not really an issue. Some of them get here pretty quick, in like a week. Yeah, USB card reader for the Dreamcast. Right, now I will move on to the Mega Drive games. So I'll get them all out and then I'll see you back after this jump cut. This uh, jump cut. Yeah. Right. Okay, starting off with the games that came with the PS2, the PS, the fat PS2 and Mega Drive 2 bundle that I bought from a family friend. We've got Ball Jacks. Complete with the manual and something behind it. What is that? What is this? Bulljacks 4.99, 26th of the 7th, 99, from Software Store in Reindeer Court. Wow. Good old days when we used to have a lot of gaming stores here. Now we have one, and the other one that we do have, they're closing down. Uh, Paperboy 2, that artwork makes me laugh. Piece is a bit damaged. Can we complete the manual? Paperboy 2! Yay! Mega Games 3. Complete with every manual and a cartridge. Wonder why this was so heavy. Closed, damn it! Thank you. Your game's three. Ah, EA Sports double header. Don't think anybody actually cares. PGA Tour ninety six. Again, the amount of people that actually care is likely to be non-existent. T two, the arcade game. Terminator two, the arcade game. Complete with the manual. Not a very good game, I don't think, personally. Andre Agassi Tennis. Complete the manual, which is flipped over, but it is all there. Get it back in. So, yeah, Andre Agassi Tennis, complete with the manual, complete with the uh, strange 90s mullet. Nobody actually cares. European Club Soccer. Who'd buy this for £17? Somebody did, and now I have it. No one cares. Olympic Gold, Barcelona 92. Nobody cares that it comes with a limited edition free souvenir booklet. No, stay on the pile. Jimmy White's Whirlwind Snooker. Now, the Jimmy White Snooker games are actually pretty fun. Okay, that's bugging me. There we go. And so is that. 
have to have my cartridges and manuals like that. So yeah, I hate it when people do that right on the man right on the manuals and the pens. God, stupid! I'd rather have stickers than that. It's a bit of damage there, but yeah, Jimmy White's will win the snooker. Not that many people care, but snooker game is quite fun. FIFA Soccer '96. Not even going to open it. Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. I've been wanting this game for a long time, and I recently picked it up. Love this game, Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. It is fantastic. Pick it up if you don't own it. If you don't have a Mega Drive, it's on. I think it's on the Wii Virtual Store, Virtual Console Store, whatever. So yeah, do pick it up. Great. Sonic compilation. Um, I already own all these games separately. I just picked this up because. Well, it sort of completes the collection, really. Uh, Xenon 2 Mega Blast. Looks like a shoot 'em up. Might be a mediocre one. It is complete. Yeah, Xenon 2 Mega Blast. Might be good, might not. I haven't tried it. And another game that I've been wanting to pick up for quite a while Rocket Knight Adventures. This is a brilliant game. Anybody who doesn't own this game for the Mega Drive needs to own it. It is fantastic. Great. Great fun from Konami. Love a bit of Rocket Knight Adventures. And we've got Toe Jam and Earl and Toe Jam and Earl in Planet on Bunkerdron. No manual in this one. Which is irritating, the price I paid for the both of them. Yeah, you got Toe Jam and Earl without the manual. And Toe Jam and Earl in Planet on Bunkerdron. Yeah, gotta love a bit of Toe Jam and Earl. That looks faded, but it's not. That's bugging me. But it can stay like that for now. At least it's got the manual in. And... Batman! Batman! With the cover printed the wrong way around. It should be that way. Batman! 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 This is the Japanese Batman release with, like I said, the cover printed the wrong way a very unique case, it's like the Russian cases but actually done properly you have to push that, see, push you push it and you can open the case well it's got the manual and the cartridge which is squared off at the edges which is very unique so yeah it's pulled up a bit on the edges but Batman Um, there, yeah, that man, wrong way round, bloody thing. Now, is that it? Is that it? Yep, that's it. Okay, so I've made a complete mess of everything, but you see, I've changed my shirt because that wasn't actually it. God, I should write these things down before I do it. Um, this is the Gunlord t-shirt. Not sure how well you can see this, but it's got printing on the front and printing on the back. This is a very good t-shirt. You know, it's a bit too big for me, but I'm still going to wear it because it looks so amazing. But other than that, that is it. So, thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing, and I hope some of you did sit through all this. If you didn't, then... Like no, don't really. Um, if you didn't, then you're not really watching this to see me speak. But if you did, then thank you very much, and thank you very much for subscribing. I hope you enjoy my future videos. And if you do have the time, then please check out my other channel, More on Craft, which will also be in the link in the description below. I'll also probably leave it up there somewhere, where I do Let's Plays. I play Minecraft, started Bioshock Infinite with a base cam. Who wants to see that? Nobody. But you might. Um, I also play Terraria with a friend from dogcraft.net which none of you watching this would have heard about um, I also play Anti-Chamber which is a very strange game so yeah check out that channel if you want if not then don't um, if you enjoyed this video please leave a like comment on anything you want from me that I own that you want to own I'll likely the next video I'll likely make is a video detailing all the games I have up for trade, all the games I don't want. So, like I said, thanks for watching. Thank you for reaching 400 subscribers for me. 
Thanks a lot. And I'll catch you in future videos. Goodbye, retro gamers. See ya. And I've dropped it, so there you go. Woohoo! Woo! This is what happens when I film pickups videos. Five months worth of pickups videos. Um, 